What's up? Oops, little mistake there. <clears throat> How you doing? Welcome. Happy Friday. Um, as always, sorry for the delayed uh, start there, but um, we are here and I'm sketching and I'm hoping to cover some stuff that you guys asked me about. Thank you for sending in responses. Um, I know a few of you have asked about um, sketches from nature, so I'm actually going to do some of that today, um, as well as just whatever you guys want to see. So happy Friday, but just to kick things off, I wanted to show you what I've been up to this week. Um, again, sorry for the choppy video. I have no idea what's going on. I've tried to um, check out the technical support on my uh, camera here. But we're going to keep pushing along. So um, if I can't fix this, I'm going to have to get some other hardware and just uh, bite the bullet on the cost. So anyhow, um, this is what I've been up to. So I got some commissions from a guy who actually works for Nike. And he was like, hey, can you draw me some shoes? And I was like, cool, let's do it. Let's have fun. Um, so he wanted me to do a Air Jordan 1. So there's there's one of them there. And this is on vellum. I'll be doing something, not a shoe today, but a similar technique. So you'll be able to see that. Um, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. And so, yeah, on vellum. Vellum kind of like tracing paper. It is uh, a little bit... Um, more absorbent though so it'll actually take in the marker ink and you can build a tone and all that good stuff so there's that one <clears throat> and then he wanted me to do some yeezys so these are the uh yeezy i think they are the i always forget the name uh red october um <laughs> they retail for like thousands of dollars so i can understand why he wanted the drawing but that was number two i'll be mailing these out today so just wanted to show you before I did, and the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 um, that he wanted me to do as well. So super fun, trying to replicate materials, capture stitches, all that. Obviously not a perfect um, replica of a sketch. Um, it is a sketch after all, so uh, took some artistic liberties, but totally had fun. So if you're interested in commissions or things like this, definitely let me know, hit me up, slide into them DMs, if you will and I'll be able to uh, fulfill your request. So yeah, thanks for all the fun work. And just as a reminder, he also ordered one of these, which is my 500 sketches in poster form. You can find this on my website at sketchaday.com slash store. You'll be able to purchase one. They're individually numbered and signed as well, but this is a collection of 500 sketches that I did over a month. Granted, you can't see all the details on this, but tell you what, for you guys watching the stream, if you do purchase one, I will throw in the PDF as well for free, which is anywhere from nine to $12, depending on which one you get. So I will happily throw that in for you, but let me know if you want one. It's 16 inches by 16 inches in size, just to let you know. So where's everyone uh, tuning in for? Tuning in from rather. I'm always curious. <laughs> I'm hailing from Salt Lake City, Utah. FYI, that's where I'm at. So like I said, <clears throat> I wanted to kind of do something from nature. So I just Googled bird and I'm just going to pick one of these and try and render it. Um, I've never actually drawn a bird or rendered. So this will be this will be an interesting challenge and hopefully a fun one. So you guys let me know what you're feeling like. Switzerland. Hello, Linus from Switzerland, the UK. This is insane. I'm always blown away at uh, where everyone's calling from. It's pretty crazy. So so yeah, I'm just going to pick something here. Whatever you guys uh, feel like, feel free to let me know as well. That's totally um, an option. So let me, let me get out of this view here. So color, style, whatever, if there's a specific one. Fifth like greetings from Russia. Russia, wow. Hello, Svetlana from Russia. That's crazy. What time is it there in Russia? Let me know. I'm not going to do Big Bird. <laughs> but this guy looks pretty cool, this Kingfisher. Um, we could try and do something like that. Um, it's got some blues and oranges. So how about, how about we work with this guy right here? 
So I'm just going to tap on it and let's zoom out. If my iPad here will let me do that, tap on the image. Okay. So I'm going to have this up on my screen. Um, I won't be able to do picture in picture for reference for you guys, but this is what I'm drawing. So lots of feathers. We've got lots of color. We've got a branch that we can build on and so forth. And I think this will, I think this will be a fun one. So I'm going to cut over here and we'll get started. Kenya. Wow. Hello. I actually just did my, um, my ancestry or whatever DNA test. And it was really cool to see all the ties to Africa for me. I'm actually, um, at least my family goes back to Nigeria and I think it's Sierra Leone. Yeah. Sierra Leone. So I'm from Swaziland. I've got some East, uh, <clears throat> or not East Asian, West Asian, meaning uh, Middle Eastern in me as well. So pretty interesting. Okay. So whenever I'm, whenever I'm working with, uh, oops, whenever I'm working with, there we go. <laughs> whenever I'm working with something that's observational, I try and take proportional measurements. Um, a lot of times I'll use my pencil or I will kind of use my finger calipers and just kind of gauge things and make sure. But a lot of it's just gestural at first. Um, so we'll probably do two sketches here, one to kind of capture the gesture and the body of the thing. And then we'll clean it up and apply our markers, paint and whatever else we got to do. So we're just going to have fun with this guy today. So let's get to it here. All right, here we go. So let me try and capture the head and the head. You know, if I were to break it up into geometry, probably two circles like this, something like that. And then the body, I've got another ellipse for the chest of this wonderful creature. Another ellipse here. I've got the tail feathers kind of coming down like so. And I know his legs about here. Oops, you guys can't really see too well. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Oops, that's in. There we go. So now you guys can see a little bit more, hopefully. Um, so leg right about here. You know, there's, you know, it's sitting on some some tree thing. And I'm gonna take some liberties and kind of kind of extend the branches because I want this to feel, you know, a lot better of a scene. Okay, but this is my this is my underlay sketch. And again, the intent is just to kind of capture the gesture of the thing. And then we'll come back and add the details and whatever. But um, I like to focus on kind of getting the proportion right first and just those main lines that define the thing, or in this case, the bird. <laughs> and then I can come back over and get whatever other, whatever details I need in here. Okay. There'll be a lot of pencil sharpening noises in the background. Hey, bro, how to draw. Yeah, how to draw. Um, you just do it, man. <laughs> I know it sounds uh, maybe a bit flippant of me to say, but you just have to get in and, and start doing it. I have come a long way from being a math major to working um, you know, professionally as a designer. I should have Coke sponsor me or something. Actually, if I drink it this way, you can't really tell what it is. So there you go. Anyhow, um, this is a Prismacolor Flare pencil right there. And they run about a dollar US a piece. Um, I don't know where you are and how much you can get them for, but maybe you can get them a little bit cheaper. So at this, at this phase, what I'm trying to do is just be a little bit more careful in my strokes as I go. And as I lift the paper, so this is kind of what we do digitally. We have layers, but we can adjust the opacity. But if I lift the paper, you'll notice that the drawing behind goes away and I can kind of see what I'm working on. So I'll do that as I'm going from time to time. Also important, hold your pencil, pen, whatever it is you're using, hold it a little bit further up the barrel and it'll give you the ability to see from my vantage point anyways, the ability to kind of see the drawing 
without obscuring the drawing with my hand. So hopefully you can see the difference here. There's my hand close to the tip. And as I back off, I'm able to see the drawing and actually draw as well. All right. So I'm going to use strokes that, you know, typically in industrial design sketching, I don't necessarily use um, some short strokes here just to kind of map out where things are going to be like so. And I'm going to be using paint and markers. So this will be this will be fun today. Just just white paint, actually, not uh, not the actual paint colors here. But I want to try and get just the main lines and shapes as I'm able to really lightly with the pencil. OK, so hopefully you can see that there. See the difference. Just cleaning that up. If you're drawing moves underneath, you can just move it back, fix it as you go. Um, the Prismacolor Premier pencils, they do tend to be a little bit uh, softer than the Prismacolor Very Thin. So not all Prismacolors are created equally. Maybe I should do a video on that um, just to kind of talk about the differences. But as far as colored pencils go, they are my favorite in terms of cost and just how they work. So definitely check it out if you're interested in grabbing some pencils. And the links should be in the video description below. So you can check those out if you want to support what we're doing here at Sketch Today. Um, greatly appreciated. Thanks for being here, first and foremost. Friday is when I go live. We hang out, we chill, we chat, all that good stuff. So. Thank you again for all the suggestions. And I just wanted to do something. I just felt like doing something from nature today. I don't typically do natural things. So this is, uh, for me anyways, really good practice opportunity to get all this, uh, all this stuff in. So, but yeah, feel free to chat, hit me up with questions, anything about life, design, illustration, you name it. I'm here, we're hanging, having a good time. All right, so just down to the leg here. And just so you can see what I'm what I'm doing again, I am trying to draw this kingfisher bird here. Okay, just like that. I'm trying to block in those main shapes as we draw, okay? So that's, that's what I'm referencing here. I'm using Prismacolor uh, Premier pencils right now. I do have some that are colored that I'm going to be referencing as well. Um, like I mentioned, just to kind of round out the scene, I'm going to add little stubby branches here to what this this beautiful bird is sitting on. We'll just map out, you know, any textures or lines or things that we want to have here. So lifting a paper again, you can kind of see there's a shape we're working with like so. The best iPad for design illustrations and cartoonists. Um, that's a really good question. If you have the money, get an iPad Pro. Um, if you don't have the money, just get a regular iPad that works with the Apple Pencil. Um, the differences aren't significant enough, in my opinion, that um, you would sincerely notice unless, you know, you're someone like me who uses it day in and day out. So I guess that that's something to, to consider is how much you're going to use it. Are you using it to, you know, make money? off of it or is it just kind of a, a hobbyist thing so i've now removed the paper from below um, that i was using as a guide so i can focus on just mapping out some of these areas that i'm going to be applying color in feathers and so forth okay really liking this music i found it on spotify it is copyright free so i can use it in the streams Pretty chill, easy going, in case you're wondering. If you are a musician, though, and you want me to kind of play your music, 
let me know. I'd be happy to take a look um, and play that on the stream as well. But I hope you guys are hope you guys are having fun. Faber Castle. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I haven't really tried those out. Um, I I just have gone with you know kind of what I like to use as a designer. Okay, so I'm gonna bust out some markers here, and I've never really dug into my <laughs> blue violets enough. Just because, um, or blue greens and blue violets, which eh, doesn't look like these are the right colors. So I think I was looking for the blue greens, which are gonna be right over here. I have lots of markers. So let's open this guy up. Yeah, so this seems to be more in line with the colors that we're gonna get on this bird. Okay, a little bit of a blue green and so forth. So I always like to start light. <clears throat> until I get it right. Okay, so I'm gonna pick some of these lighter tones and I'm coming into this cold, guys. I haven't really, um, I haven't done any prep for this stream and I rarely do because I want you guys to see exactly how I do it and how I approach these tough problems in real time. So that's the whole point of this, this live stream. None of this is like scripted, edited, none of that stuff. Um, so I'm gonna grab some scrap marker paper here. Well, it's not really scrap, but grab some marker paper. And what I like to do is kind of just, oh, thank you, Tev, that's so kind. Um, I like to kind of just test the colors and write down a little bit of what they are, BG49. I am using Copic markers. No, they do not sponsor me. Yes, they are very expensive, but I do love them. Um, this is BG13. So I'll kind of go through and do this as I'm working just so that I have a quick visual reference, BG23. I'm gonna need some blue, I think, as well, but we can start with the blue greens and then work our way down to the blue. Um, here's a 11, BG11, and we've got two here. Oh, that's nice. It's BG02, and we've got a 32. This one's kind of dry though. Every now and then I have a dry marker. So I'm gonna to toss that to the side until I get some more ink. Thank you, Nin. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name and I'm not gonna try because I don't wanna do you a disservice, but I just wanna say definitely thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support and thank you for being here. Absolutely. Um, so how long do my drawings normally take? Um, it really depends. It depends on if I am, um, working on something that is meant to be, you know, super detailed commission. This one will probably take me about 30, 40 minutes. Um, sorry guys, I'm just closing this heat vent in my tiny office because it's burning up in here. All right, I'm back. Um, usually takes about 30, 40 minutes. So I personally don't like to work super long on a drawing because time is precious, time is money. Um, in my case, it's time away from my kids. So I like to be as efficient as I can be when I am working. All right, so I'm just gonna break out some blues here as well. And let's see, this five looks good. I'm gonna use this four and probably this 14. Um, I do wanna pay attention to the really dark tones as well in the drawing. So I'm gonna pull out some darker, you know, blue greens and blues. We've got pencils we're gonna use as well. But this is just an important part of, of my process in making sure that we have kind of a range of values, okay? So in other words, if I were mapping out my values as I'm drawing, I like to have, you know, three kind of main values in the sketch. So for example, I might use my 49 and have that, well, I'm doing this in reverse. Maybe I should flip this. So let's say this is dark, right? Dark around that side. Um, this might be my 49. And then I like to work in the same color family where possible, but unfortunately I don't have that here. Um, this is 23. And then I may have like, you know, 13, something like that. And then just on the outsides of those for blending purposes, I like to kind of have some darker tones as well. So this is BG78. Um, this 18 looks pretty dark as well, just as an option. 
Um, and then to kind of round things out, we've got a blue 39. I do get paid for drawings. Here's a 39, good question. Here's a 29, might be a little saturated, but the great thing is with Copic markers, they do blend fairly well. Here's a blue 14 and so forth. So I like to have kind of three main working colors, right? And then just on the peripheral, we've got some darker and then even some lighter or analogous colors that we can use as well. So that's kind of how I plan things out. All right, let me see if I can remember where I was with these. I am also notoriously unorganized. So thank you for bearing, bearing with me and being patient. All right, so back to our bird here. <clears throat> I've got some greens that I'm gonna work with. Um, the oranges are easy. I kind of, I use those a lot in product design. So I'll be able to switch to those fairly quickly and I'm not gonna map those out here. But we'll start with the blue. And like I said, you want to start light until you get it right. Now, to save the drawing under, or save the paper underneath, rather, because vellum is not uh, completely uh, safe in terms of markers. In other words, if I apply the marker a ton on the top, it's going to bleed through to the back. So what I want to make sure is that I have a piece of backer paper. This is actually marker paper that I've slid under the main portion of the vellum or the, the top vellum rather so that it doesn't ruin the paper underneath. Okay. So now I'm going to take my green and just start kind of working some of these areas where I do have these blues and much like a coloring book, I like to kind of outline the area first and then add the shades or tones that I'm after. Okay. And I don't know what it is for me, but mentally it just makes it a lot easier to apply those colors as I'm going. If I can just map out the area first with my markers. So I guess you could call this kind of a wash. Um, sometimes I'll do it with, and I will apply this base kind of blue green to the whole thing because to me anyways, that's, that's kind of the main color or tone of this uh, beautiful, beautiful bird. Okay, so just a little green there. Oh, thanks for Carrie. Yeah, my goal is to do this every Friday live. Um, so if you like watching stuff being created live instead of the produced videos I do, this is where I'll be on Fridays. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this main color. There's a bunch of ways to do this. Like you could get a really wide Copic marker. Um, we could have used the inks to create a wash, which we did last week as well. But the idea is just to kind of get my base base colors in. Could I do a video on rendering objects with curved edges? I struggle finding right detail of passing on soft edges. Um, yes, I will add that to the list for this week. Thank you. In fact, better yet, definitely comment on the video after it's posted or just come find me on Instagram and send it to me because <laughs> tell you what, I'm 37. You guys know how old I am now. And when you're this old, your brain kind of becomes a sieve in a lot of ways. All right. So just paying attention to this bird, you know, it's got a lot of texture, feathers, so forth. So as I'm shading with the marker, I want to pay attention to the lighting on this bird, but also the direction of the marker strokes, because that's going to help convey um, the body and shape of this bird so that it doesn't appear to be too flat. Okay, and that's something, something I definitely want to avoid as we're working on this. All right, and you guys let me know if you'd rather see products, I'm happy to do that as well, but I thought this would be a good kind of, uh, a good little uh, something different for you guys, okay? All right, let me grab, my tester paper again, because I just want to make sure I'm using a blue here that'll work for me. Happy Friday. Welcome to the stream. What just happened? Did we lose the video? I think we did. Okay, let's try this again. 